Welcome to Studio 3, News Team 3. This is Jimmy Rickle, uh, your host. Uh, this is uh, day one after the election. Wednesday the... The 9th. My goodness. This uh, month of November is running away from us. Interesting night. Uh, we sat up and watch the news uh, throughout the country talk about uh, who was leading what state by how many votes. What was unique is that this is the first time in a long time that three or four states that Trump was ahead by oh, over 20,000 votes or more did not declare um, that he was a winner. So we don't know what the issues were there, but the bottom line is this. We now have a President Donald J. Trump uh, out of 51,035 voters in Mendocino County, 250 precincts. Uh, Clinton pretty much won, but that's not how the uh, states, the United States won. So we looked at uh, at 9.17 in the evening on uh, election night. It looked like uh, Trump was going to be president because of his lead in Michigan. Uh, he had 254 electoral votes at that time. Um, by 11 p.m., um, I drove by the Republican headquarters downtown Ukiah and it was dark. It surprised me. I anticipated uh, a party or something going on there. By 11.45 in the evening, Pence and family came on the stage, basically introduced the uh, new president-elect of the United States, a uh, historic night. Uh, by 11.48, Trump and his family arrive on st stage. Two minutes later, 11.50, he started talking, and he talked for approximately 15 minutes. So, here we are. We got a new president. Uh, Republicans are back in the office. I think one of the major issues throughout the whole country was that uh, Hillary Clinton um, did not seem to be trustworthy did not seem to be the appropriate person for uh, the presidency. Uh, like Gore and Bush many years ago, uh, she may have got the popular vote, but uh, again, the game comes down to the electoral votes. And apparently, uh, Mr. Trump is our new president. It's going to be interesting how that uh, uh, fades out. Uh, as we're seeing now on the news, the financial markets, uh, the uncertainty throughout the world, uh, they're taking a little dip in their value. But we think that's going to be short-lived. Uh, we would hope the best for Mr. Trump and whoever gets in as part of the machine that actually run the country. Uh, his speech seemed to be a lot more presidential than any of his speeches in the past. Uh, what was interesting is that Hillary Clinton people uh, saw the writing on the wall. Um, their celebration was moot. People were leaving, not happy. And I'm sure that was true throughout the country. Uh, here in California, colleges uh, had some sort of protest. Uh, Irregardless, uh, we got a new president. Uh, apparently this Thursday, uh, President Obama and Trump will, will have some sort of meeting and, and presentation uh, to the world, basically, that uh, uh, there's a new game in town, and it's called Donald J. Trump. At least for the next four years, we'll see how disastrous his four years uh, can be. Normally, they go eight years, two terms, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Here in Mendocino County, uh, different things. Uh, we had fun the other day, the election day actually. 
we went up to Willits and we drove the new bypass uh, freeway going from the south end of town all the way to the north end of town. And so we're going to be bringing that to you. It's interesting that on both sides of the roadway we were able to see agricultural and, uh, and cattle grazing and so forth like that. In the beginning, the first turnoff you take will take you to Highway 20 via the old Highway 101, which I think now will probably be renamed uh, Highway 20. And it will take you downtown Willits into that turnoff going to Fort Bragg. The other uh, turnoff to get off this uh, thoroughway is all the way on the other end of town past the high school. Um, and it's interesting how they orchestrated this uh, great uh, freeway. We anticipate that it, in a matter of time, Willits is going to experience a couple things. One is they're going to experience uh, lower traffic issues, which will probably make them happy, except for maybe commute hours. Um, also, you're going to have um, businesses suffer here down the road. Uh, Ukiah was that way. It took them 10 years to kind of build out to where they are now, Denny's and, and Coles and all that area. It was all uh, pear orchards and, and uh, walnut orchards. Subsequently, all that was built out, but it took a long time. Uh, Cloverdale had the same sort of issue once the freeway got in. They had to redesign uh, uh, the base of their community, their downtown area, and uh, I don't think they really recovered. Well, I anticipated Willits going to have the same sort of issues. All right, Mendocino County uh, Measure AF did not pass. This was a measure put up by the Sonoma County pot growers. Uh, it was a very uh, um, uh, bad measure. And apparently the no on AF um, people, including myself, were successful in bringing that to the attention to the voter that this was not a good measure for anybody, let alone folks in Mendocino County. Now, throughout the state of California, they did pass the personal use marijuana issue. And as my interview with Dave Eister um, indicated, uh, this is going to be a problem. More people are going to feel free to be under the influence, whether that be driving, um, coming in your store, uh, working at your store, whatever. I think the main issues are this. Even though you have the right to smoke, employers can deny you employment if you come back with a dirty test. Dirty test basically meaning um, most employers will have you do a drug test to see that you're free of uh, any chemicals, that particular behavior. Uh, marijuana sticks around for 30 days or so, so you may not pass that test. So we'll just see how many problems this actually creates. Uh, Mr. Issa, the DA, talked about uh, um, the problem is going to increase driving under the influence. Uh, you're going to have other issues. They're going to have to recanter, as the law enforcement is, how they address these issues. As we find out, uh, found out, that uh, because of their lack of attention, they be in the DA uh, office system in the past, the sheriff's department, and other law enforcement is the so-called mom and pop grower who grow seven plants or less. Uh, in our opinion, it's excessive. They're doing it to make money. Uh, they're not claiming that on income tax. So that sort of issue is going to go on. And unless you got a neighbor complaining that you're not in compliance, or whatever, and there is a number that you can call the uh, Sheriff's Department dispatch, don't have it handy, um, to complain about somebody's grow. And of course now, you know, they're all harvesting. But they'll go out and check it out, so uh, uh, Sheriff Allman has stated. So anyway, a lot of things have passed throughout this election cycle. 
it looks like we had a fairly decent voter turnout. I haven't seen the specific numbers here in Mendocino County, but throughout the United States, we had a very good uh, turnout. The last commentary I want to make is about your Access TV. Um, we have been an Access TV provider, producer, since 1990. And we've seen the entity of Access TV, especially here in Ukiah, go through a variety of changes. Uh, different board members, different leaders, different attitudes about how uh, to conduct business, and so forth. Now, Access TV, approximately six years ago, got regenerated here in Ukiah. Um, Mr. John Glasgow was hired by the county to to father in a new nonprofit group and hire a individual to help administer uh, the three access channels. There's a government channel, there's an education channel, and then there's a public access channel. Uh, channel three is a public access. That's pretty much uh, what local community producers and others utilize to get their free speech messages out. Well, uh, the last <laughs> Uh, director, Erica Cooper Ryder, uh, got paid something like $36,000 a year for a four or five year period, but failed to perform. And what I mean is she was hired to help garner community support so that Access TV could be an entity on their own and not depend on, on access monies or or uh, franchise fees, which are paid by you and I, every cable subscriber, uh, goes, pays, uh, for, used to be 40 cents, now I think it's two and a half or more, goes into a fund that uh, pretty much is distributed to the county and city governments over the years. They have et, et up this money in their own general funds or different funds and not put it back out in access. Well, the bottom line, Erica Cooper Ida failed. She basically ripped off uh, access for uh, 36000 a year and did not do her job. And then when the situation changed as to how the county was going to divvy out some of this money, uh, there was uncertainty with the state, how they were going to deal with it. Uh, she basically threatened to close down uh, the access system. The county picked up that idea. They basically broadcast their Board of Supervisors meetings and other committee meetings through the internet. The individual that was working part-time for the county and part-time for uh, Access TV, Scott Spears, I believe is his name, he was hired full-time by the county to run their particular system. So now you've got a board president, or had a board president, uh, um, Alan Regina, He's the son of uh, the Regina Water folks out in Talmage. You had uh, John Glasgow, which was originally hired by the county to do an inventory, but basically they tried to re-establish uh, the Access TV folks. I and others were providing uh, content to them. Ken Steely uh, came on board doing an excellent job interviewing folks. You know, it takes a while to kind of learn that particular skill, but he's providing content to uh, the local viewers here in Mendocino County. Uh, the board itself, uh, we're going to write a letter to the uh, county basically demanding funding or they were going to close down. We advised them that that was, was not prudent. They're setting a negative presence. Uh, subsequently, uh, we're not sure what's going to happen. We sent a letter to both the county and to the board saying that there's case law that says they can't shut down. They have obligations to maintain their guardianship for free speech. Once you put your foot in your water, you can't take it back out. Uh, now we're uh, evolving. There's a new uh, uh, Facebook page put up by one of the producers, uh, Mallow. We're not quite sure what his particular role is, but we think uh, everybody else is exiting left and he's sticking around to try and make this work. Uh, we're going to keep submitting programs. Our concern is that not just 
our freedom of speech or access TV, but yours and your neighbors, your children.